Hello, my name is Mr. Louis Dowling and I am a TOK teacher. I am the famous artist Louis from Paris. And I am Dr. Dowling, a scientist. Together, we will be exploring essay title two, which is... For artists and natural scientists, which is more important? What can be explained or what cannot be explained? Discussed with reference to the arts and the natural sciences. As always, we need to begin by deconstructing the essay title. So for this particular essay title, I would say that we need to consider a few different components and it can be slightly tricky, but on the whole, I think we should be able to follow exactly what this title is asking us to do. Hopefully, after you've gone through this process, you won't encounter too many problems um, but it's very important that you do actually go through the process. So the question is for artist and natural scientist which is more important what can be explained or what cannot be explained discuss with reference to the arts and the natural sciences. Now for me when I look at this question I'm immediately drawn towards this part what can be explained on one hand and on the other hand what cannot be explained and a key word here is explained which ties in with the TOK concept of explanation now you're going to have to think carefully about what explanation means to you I know when I have explored this concept with my students in the past we've talked about um, causal relationships how x leads to y and discussing exploring the nature of that connection we've talked about analysis uh, we've talked about um, providing an overall reason for something um, I would say other TOK concepts like justification and evidence might feature as part of your explanation, but sometimes you don't need those things at all. It might not be the best kind of explanation without justification or evidence. Um, but I think that an explanation can essentially be any instance in which you elaborate on something and um, in which you talk in detail about a certain phenomenon and um, so look there are different options there i don't actually know the right answer you're going to have to think carefully about the term explanation think about what it means define it in your introduction and that is obviously going to have implications for how you go about writing this essay. But anyway, that is a key part of the question that you need to pay attention to. The next part of the question that I think is vital is this, which is more important? So we need to actually make a judgment here, either A, it's what can be explained or B, what can not be explained. We need to decide that one of those things is more important. So we must reach a judgment about importance here. Um, we're getting towards the end of this breakdown now. I am intrigued by the instruction discuss with reference to the arts and the natural sciences. So this is one of the TOK essay titles where we are told directly which AOKs we need to talk about, the arts and the natural sciences. So we shouldn't be talking about any of the other AOKs. We have no choices to make here. But this is what's interesting. 
notice how the question starts with artist and natural scientist. Um, so you need to think carefully about that. We're not just talking about anyone within the AOK of the arts. We're not just talking about anyone within the AOK of the natural sciences. We're thinking about the actual artist and the natural scientist. So these are the main uh, movers and shakers, I suppose, within the AOKs. These are the people who actually create, produce the knowledge, as opposed to the people who just receive the knowledge. Like for instance, audiences of a film or students um, who are studying biology at university. So make sure that when you are approaching this question, you think carefully about artist and natural scientist and what is more important for those people. What can be explained or what cannot be explained. And you need to make a judgment about either one of those things. You need to say that one of them is more important. Now, because this question asks us to focus on artist and natural scientist, wouldn't it be amazing if we could actually speak to some real artist and natural scientist? Well, with that in mind, I would now like you all to sit back, relax and enjoy my interview with Louis from Paris. So, Louis from Paris, as an artist, what can you tell us about what can be explained in the AOK of the arts? Well, there are certain things that can be explained in the arts. For example, think about processes and techniques. I can explain how Jackson Pollock created his artwork through the process of drip painting. In general, I can refer to particular techniques like simile and metaphor in poetry and explain how one can usually emphasize a stronger connection than the other. In lots of low art, there are many instances of explanations being given so that everybody is ha happy at the end, the mainstream uh, audience. They like things to be wrapped up, so to speak. So giving an explanation of the character's motivations or what led a certain person to do a certain thing, um, that can certainly be given in low art. Think about a Sherlock Holmes story, for example. Maybe as an artist, there is a need to explain certain choices to oneself. Do you know Arthur Rimbaud? No. No, of course not. Uh, okay, how about we think about a movie like um, Schindler's List. It's in black and white. And I hope that was in some way intentional by the director, Steven Spielberg. I hope he could at least explain his reason for making that choice to himself. And sometimes as artists, we need to explain things in order to be accountable to others. There was a recent court case where Ed Sheeran, the famous musician, was accused of copying somebody else's song. And Ed Sheeran had to explain how he wrote the song by himself. A lot of artists, like myself, we're worried by this. We now need to be able to explain. We need to be ready to explain our own creative processes at any given, any given moment, just in case somebody accuses us of plagiarism. Okay, so that is what can be explained. What about what can't be explained? 
course, lots of things cannot be explained, for sure. Herein lies the, the true beauty of the arts. Think about themes and concepts. Love in William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. War and peace in Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace. These are ideas that we have spent thousands of years trying to understand and we still can't explain them. As such, artists are motivated to try and explain them through their artwork. Indeed, the same could be said about much bigger issues like the human condition or our purpose in life. Ultimately, as artists, we keep seeking the truth. Truth with, truth with a capital T. We are basically all romantics. Romantics with a capital R. The universe and our place within it is our muse, so to speak. And by the way, let me just comment on art as a form too. We can't explain it, yes. We can talk about music and we can talk about how music is basically just a transmission of sound waves to our ears. We can do that, but we don't like to think about it that way. We are more interested in the emotional and aesthetic qualities of the art form. We don't always need to explain and quantify. Where is the fun in that? And before I go, I would just like to add this. As artists, I suppose we do need to be aware of the fact that our work may be made public. That is the aim. People will receive it and interpret it in their own way, no? They will then explain their interpretations. That's how they benefit from the artwork and how they share their experience with others. We as artists shouldn't give them the answers. No, but we need to give them the room to interpret and explain. The Mona Lisa. People have talked for centuries about her smile. If it was less enigmatic, the discussion would have stopped a long time ago. But no, Da Vinci as an artist facilitated the openness of that artwork. He is a very clever man. Louis from Paris, thank you very much. Merci, my pleasure. That's an artist? You might be thinking, what would a natural scientist say? Well, let's hear from Dr. Dowling. Hello, Dr. Dowling. Very nice to meet you. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. The first one that I would like to ask is, as a natural scientist, what can be explained in your area of knowledge? What can be explained? Well, as a scientist, I would like to argue that everything can be explained. That's how we have to approach it. It's this notion that lies at the very core of our positivism. It's what lies at the root of the age of reason and the enlightenment. As scientists, we observe the world, the world around us. We notice things and we make hypotheses. We test them through experimentation. We verify the results in order to reach conclusions about our universe. Such findings are then verified until they become facts. This is our scientific method. It's through this methodology that we, we try to explain our knowledge in the natural sciences. 
if knowledge has not gone through this method, it can't properly be explained. It is thus not accepted by the scientific community. Now, don't get me wrong. We can't be certain about absolutely everything. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that we need to at least try to explain what we claim to know. And that's incredibly important. If a claim is not explainable in some way, it's not scientific knowledge in my opinion. Could, could you provide any examples of that for the audience at home? Examples? Well, let's think of things that we can explain with confidence. Smoking causes cancer. Global temperatures are rising. There, there, there's direct evidence for these things. And this evidence helps our explanations. Some claims we are less confident about. The Big Bang Theory. Atomic Model Theories. At the end of the day, these are all theories. We can't prove them 100%. That's why it's called the Big Bang Theory instead of the Big Bang Fact. But the evidence we do have can help point us in a certain direction and provide us with a basis for our own explanations. Okay, got that. My second question is what cannot be explained in the natural sciences? There are definitely some things that we can't explain at the moment. Who knows, they might never be explained. We still don't know exactly why people yawn, for example. What about consciousness? Do we have a conscience? Do we have a sense of consciousness, consciousness inside of us? Is it like a spirit? I don't know. Is consciousness a real thing? Where does it come from? And then we have the mysteries of the universe. What do we really know about dark matter? Also, we get hundreds, hundreds of signals every single day sent to us from space. But we are no closer to working out what they actually mean. And it's these, it's these kinds of mysteries, questions, that drive us forward as scientists. We are naturally inquisitive people. We want to find things out. If we can't explain at this point in time, we'll ask how we can explain. And then we start the process of getting closer to the truth. That's what we are doing now with the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, for example. We acknowledge that we can't explain everything at this point in time. So we have set up this machine to help us along the way. As scientists, we won't give up. Dr. Dowling, it was an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for all of your thoughts and ideas. Okay, so, so much information there. Um, I think it would be worthwhile to take a step back and summarize some of the things that were talked about by Louis from Paris and Dr. Dowling. So, for the artist, what can be explained? Well, maybe you could focus on processes, techniques, basic content within the artwork, for example, the story. Explain to oneself as an artist. So as an artist, you need to be able to explain to yourself why you're doing a certain thing. And maybe you might need to explain in order to be accountable to others who might accuse you of stealing other people's art. What cannot be explained? Well, you might want to talk about certain themes and concepts. They can be explored, but not necessarily explained. Um, I think the biggest uh, ideas that can't be explained are ideas of the human condition, the meaning of life, both of which feature prominently in artworks. Art itself doesn't need to be explained. Um, 
we can say that we like music we don't need to explain how we like music or why we like music um, and artists ultimately leave things open-ended they don't provide the explanations they allow the viewers the recipients of the art to try and explain things for themselves even though they'll never actually be able to do that what about for the scientist what can be explained well they approach everything I would argue with an all can be explained mindset they try and produce explanations by following the scientific method it's an ongoing process uh, they keep doing it until they find the evidence and proof to support their explanations what cannot be explained well you have the mysteries of life the mysteries of the universe uh, lots of things at this point in time can't be explained um, but scientists are curious they want to find out so they keep asking how and I think we could synthesize all of this in the following way uh, what can be explained is typically important because it gives us a foundation a basis for future knowledge whether that be techniques skills or maybe content knowledge that is needed to produce new theories what cannot be explained is also important because it provides a motivation for further exploration we want to find out more about love friendship relationships uh, society life in general in the arts we want to find out more about the mysteries of our own biology the mysteries of the universe through the sciences and it's these mysteries that propel us to keep going further and further okay so now we have explored what can be explained and what cannot be explained in the AOKs of the arts and the natural sciences what we need to do now is a really important job we need to decide which is more important what can be explained what cannot be explained and remember that we are doing this through the perspective of the artist and the natural scientist ultimately you need to come up with your own idea i've given you lots of ideas about what might be considered important what might not but you need to reach your own judgment of what you think is the most important um, according to those knowers um, how you do that is up to you you're going to have your own reasons for making your decisions and you'll have to articulate them in your essay um, to help you I've decided that I will try and make things a bit more visual for you so I think these are some of the options you could play around with maybe you could say that in the arts um, what cannot be explained is more important that than what can be explained maybe in the natural sciences what can be explained is more important than what cannot alternatively you've got the opposite so you could say okay in the art what can be explained is more important than what cannot and in the natural sciences what cannot be explained is more important than what can according to the artist natural scientist um, alternatively you could do something like this both so um, maybe in both the sciences sorry in both the art and the natural sciences um, what can be explained is more important for the artist and the natural scientist or what cannot be explained is more important for both the artist and the natural sciences scientist I'm fed up of saying art and natural science now yes i'm gonna have nightmares about that tonight um so look there's some options you can play around with in terms of structure um i feel as though there's only one real structure here i feel as though you need your introduction you need a conclusion and i would say in the middle maybe one section dedicated to artist and one section dedicated to the natural scientist um, and within those sections 
you need to express what you think is more important, what can be explained or what cannot. You need to give your real life situations, your examples, your counter arguments. You need to evaluate your multiple perspectives and uh, you need to explain your ideas. But I would seriously suggest splitting this essay um, along the lines of the two AOKs, the artist and the natural scientist. As always, I have some bonus questions for you. Uh, you might want to think about these just to extend your ideas or to approach the subject matter in a different way. How can judgments about importance be made? Do the arts and the natural sciences share some common traits or are they the polar opposites of each other? Can anything ever be truly explained? And conversely, does everything have the potential to be explained? You might want to think about these questions and they might uh, lead you to some interesting ideas that you could potentially feature in your essay. So thank you very much for watching this week's video. Hopefully this has provided you with lots of interesting ideas or at least a starting point. Uh, as you start the essay writing process. Uh, please stay tuned for more videos for the remaining essay titles. I'll try and post one per week. Uh, but yeah, that's it for now. So that is goodbye from me. See you later. Sorry, au revoir from moi. Bang, goodbye from me.